let's start populating the model hub and create a new model. In reinforcement learning, you would have something called an environment. And in this environment, you would have an agent taking different actions. Uh, and to make this more concrete, let's say that your environment is a game and you then have a game character, which is your agent. And that game character can move around. It can walk up, down, left, right, and it can jump. Uh, and those would be its actions. You can send in the game environment, so say the image of the game, and the goal is to get a good action, a good next step for your character. However, this creates a feedback loop since the character, when it takes this action in the environment, will directly change the environment. So you will have something where it's no longer just enough to predicting one sample and saying what this is or what the best action here is. But you instead need to be aware that actions which you took a long time ago might affect things in the future. Um, and this is where the challenge of reinforcement learning comes in. Uh, and there is a bunch of different techniques for tackling this reinforcement learning uh, problems. And the one which we're going to use now is something called Q-learning. And what Q-learning does is that it, it takes this environment and it assumes that this environment only have a finite amount of states. So a finite amount of places where your character can be, a finite amount of ways that everything in the environment can be in. And it then places all of these states in a table together with the actions. So imagine a table, a huge table, with all the possible states uh, and all the possible actions. And the goal here is then to fill in this um, this action state couples with values. Uh, and the values are then supposed to represent how good that action is to take in that state. So if you have a complete full Q table, you will find every state in your environment, uh, meaning every possible position in the environment, you'll know exactly which action to take. The problem with this though, or one of the problems with it, is that this Q table can grow ridiculously large. It's, uh, if you imagine a fairly small screen of 200 by 200 by three pixels, and each pixel can have 255 values, that's a lot of states already. So the, there's a lot of approaches working on this Q table, trying to find sparse values and trying to find some kind of pattern in them. And it turns out that deep learning is an expert on, at handling sparse values. So what we're going to do in a deep Q learning network, which is called, um, is that we replace this Q table with just a deep neural network. And we apply all the functions we would on the Q table before just on this neural network instead. And it just takes its place and it does a great job of uh, uh, representing it or estimating it rather. The, that's the, uh, uh, the DQN is the one I'm going to build now and we're going to train it on a uh, game from Atari called Breakout, which is another very common benchmark uh, similar to uh, MNIST but for environments. Uh, yeah, so uh, we can get a better, better picture of how the environment looks like by just dragging this one out. So we have an environment component which directly connects to your gym environment in your Python. And uh, you can choose which environment you want to use here. Uh, I only have a few enabled right now. What is the breakout we're interested in? Also notice the action space here. This is how many actions your character can take. Uh, in this case, it's four. It's uh, moving left, moving, moving left, moving right, standing still, and shooting the ball. And how this game works is that you have a little ball. The goal is to try to break as many of these bricks as possible. And for every brick you break, the more points you get. So now that we have the environment, one very common practice to do is to apply grayscaling to it. And 
why we do this is because we don't really need the uh, the color the colors don't tell us much in this game so by applying grayscale we very easily just reduce the dimensionality of the game and it's already easier to train on then a traditional dqn is built of two convolutional layers and two dense layers since my laptop already had problems earlier i'm just going to build a slightly smaller version of that using one convolutional and one dense layer and making sure that the dense layer then has four outputs to match the uh, action space which we saw over here um, and the the uh, area of why having a convolutional coupled with a dense layer is very similar to one for image classification where you essentially just want something at the convolutional there because it's great for treating images and then the dense layer to make sure that you can compress it all and to make sure that all of the uh, uh, parameters or the pixels in this convolutional is taken account into. And then the final thing we would need is just a reinforcement learning training component. And here we have a few settings as well. We currently have the method Q learning which we're using. You can choose optimizer here as well. Uh, history length is how many images in a row you want to send in. So almost as a little time series of images. Batch size is how many samples in a batch, just like before. Max step is how many steps you allow your agent to take before you say that it's game over. And uh, how this works is that for every time it game over happens or it wins the games, wins the game, that counts as one episode. So we're currently running it for a lot of episodes and the max step is there to make sure that we don't get stuck anywhere. So it doesn't just stay on the same episode forever and forever. And uh, that's all you need to do to create a reinforcement learning model. So then we can start running this one and see how that one looks like. There we go. As you see, the top part now is slightly different to how it was before. And this one is custom built for uh, reinforcement learning. You can also see a little warning popping up down here. And what this one is telling us is that uh, we're waiting still for the view box. Uh, and what's happening is that uh, it's currently filling up on uh, uh, different values and uh, it's essentially filling up a queue which is going to train on. Um, and as soon as that queue has enough things to train on, it will start the actual training. And that's what we're going to see in the view box. But until that happens, it'll just keep playing the game normally uh, or randomly rather and gathering this data. So now it's starting the actual training. Uh, other things we can see here is the reward. And this is how many points it scored. You want it to be as high as possible. You can see the loss. And the loss is based off of the reward. Or, uh, it's just started now rather. So uh, we can see that it starts training and then we can see the amount of steps it's taken. And this one, as I said, it's going to stop at, I think it was a thousand max step, but the goal is to have this one as high as possible so it can, it's playing as long as possible as well. This screen also, uh, it shows which action the agent takes and it shows the probability for the different actions. So right now it's still very much random. Um, and the, the difference that these two are slightly out of sync is that this one does show just the latest update from the game while this one shows random batches that's being trained on so it's just taking random samples from this queue we were filling up before now our reinforcement learning model is somewhat famous for taking a long time to train so we're not going to get anywhere close to actually finishing it uh, so i'm just going to stop the training now but the view box and everything is still 
works as it did before. We can see how the weights and the outputs looks like. You can still look at inter gradients and everything like that. Uh, and the testing works the same as it does for classification as well, where you uh, it, it essentially shows you how it would look like if you were to play the game. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for the reinforcement learning part. If you run into any issues or any feedback, please visit our forum at forum.perceptlabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Slack channel.